All right, so welcome back. Uh, in this se session, uh, we're going to discuss uh, one of the last methods that we will learn about how to calculate deflections. And it's a very powerful method uh, that can allow us to calculate deflection in either uh, statically determinate uh, beams or statically indeterminate beams, uh, and also for any shape, uh, for example, uh, in curved uh, sections, uh, curved beams. So I'm going to review the idea <clears throat> and um, behind it, which is uh, uh, the basis for uh, Castagliano's uh, theorem uh, that we'll use, and then give a few examples. So as you can see here, we've uh, learned in the past uh, that um, the uh, elastic energy stored is um, uh, it depends on the mode of uh, stress, tension, compression, torsion, or bending direct shear or transverse shear and um, uh, it is a form that um, we derived before in which you have the integral of uh, F squared over 2AE for tension compression uh, F squared over uh, 2AE uh, is uh, the energy stored per unit length and then when we integrate it over the length dx then we get the total energy uh, in the member Similarly, for torsion, uh, the energy stored per unit length is T squared over 2GJ. G, G, uh, uh, and then when we integrate it uh, over the length, we get the total uh, energy stored in torsion. Uh, in bending, it's the same for general form, M squared over 2EI. In direct shear, it is F squared over 2AG. Uh, and in transverse shear, is the same as direct shear except there's a shape factor that we have to put in uh, depends on the cross-section, that is C. So um, having uh, said that, uh, then we wanted to uh, use these uh, ideas so that we can calculate deflections. Uh, the theorem that uh, helps us is due to a uh, me mechanic, uh, mechanical engineer uh, or a scientist, his name is Castagliano, and uh, his idea is that uh, the energy stored is the product uh, of the force times the incremental displacement. So it's a very simple idea. Uh, therefore, if we uh, want to find the incremental displacement, we take the derivative uh, of the energy stored with respect to the force in this case. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, the uh, torsional displacement, which is uh, measured in angle. And therefore, uh, in that case, the angle uh, of deflection would be the relative change in the uh, elastic energy stored with respect to the applied torque. So uh, this will give us uh, ability to do calculations for either deflection uh, or for uh, angle of twist. So let me show you here uh, what we mean uh, with that. Uh, we studied in this example, uh, in the previous uh, lecture, the, how to calculate the uh, deflection uh, at the tip of um, a cantilever beam under the action of a force, uh, F, and here the moment is equal to minus Fx. Uh, and uh, for us, what we did is we found the total energy stored and the energy stored was two parts one part was uh, stored in the shear transverse shear and the other part was stored in bending so the bending is the integration of m squared dx over 2ei and that gave us f squared l cubed over 6ei and uh, for the for the, the shear we have 1.11 F squared L over 2AG. This is the shape factor that I was talking about, C. So in this case, we have two contributions to the energy. One is due to bending, and the other one is due to shear. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we proceed. And then the next step is that <coughs> we um, use... Uh, the Castagliano's theorem that uh, is stated here in which the displacement delta I 
under the force I, so this is under the force I, is the relative change in uh, the elastic energy stored with respect to the force. Relative change meaning der derivative with respect to the force in common terms. Uh, same thing for rotational displacement. We would have the rotational displacement is the relative change of the elastic energy stored with respect to mi. So note here that uh, uh, in these cases I have to introduce uh, the elastic energy stored uh, and take the derivative with respect to either F or with respect to M. Note that the elastic energy stored depends on whether we have tension, compression, or bending, or torsion, or shear. And in either, in either case, for example, in the tension compression, uh, the energy stored is proportional to F squared. So when you take the derivative with respect to F, then you drop the 2 down, and then you have F times D E, du by df, um, and so forth. So that gives us uh, a maybe more simpler or a simpler way to uh, calculate the deflections, um, and um, that is here. Um, yeah, let's take uh, all right. So let's take the example that we have before. But before I go there, I wanted to show you <coughs> how to actually find the deflection without finding the energy. In other words, we do not need to calculate the energy um, in order for us to find the, to take its derivative. Uh, all what we need to do is write the form of the energy and its dependence on the force or the torque or the moment and then when we take the derivative um, we can just put the derivative in and integrate it uh, with respect to the distance x. And here the way it goes is uh, without calculating the uh, energy, delta i is du by dfi and this is d by dfi of u. u is m squared over 2ei dx integrated. So we can, since the integration and the differentiation are two uh, operators that can be interchanged. We can take the derivative inside the integral. So the derivative goes inside the integral. And when you take the derivative with respect to f of m squared, this would be 2m times dm by df. Um, and the two cancels with two in the bottom. And the at the end here, we would have the deflection would be 1 over ei m dm by df and that is integrated now. So we can apply the same uh, concept to calculate the deflection. Um, if we have tension compression member then you will have the 1 over ae f df by dfi and uh, if you have torsion then you will have 1 over gj t dt by dmi. And if we have bending uh, and we want the deflection, then we want over EI M DM by DFI. Um, and so these are the three formulas that we will use uh, in uh, uh, calculations of either the deflections or angle of twist. Um, in other words, I just have to find an exp expression for the energy in terms of the force or the torque or the moment and then use uh, one of these three expressions to determine the deflection or the angle of twist. So let's take an example and see how it applies if we want to find the deflection under the delta i is very important it is under the force f sub i because if we have a force system then the force system will have a combination of forces and one of them will be F sub i, and that's where we are interested in, is to find at that location under the force. So let's take the example to see how it works. So in this case, um, I have an example 410, and in this example, I have a shaft that is stepped shaft, and uh, it is fixed on one end, and then I have a uh, downward force F, 
on that end and the shaft is divided into two halves L over 2 and L over 2 uh, the first part from A to B has a moment of uh, uh, second moment of area I1 and the second part from B to C has a second moment of area twice as much so it's a little bit fatter and uh, we want to compute the deflection under the, this force here at A and also we want to compute the deflection at B well if, if you look at this uh, it's um, we have a slight uh, thing something here that we have to be uh, concerned with and that is uh, if you consider the point uh, A, for example, right here, uh, this point A is under the force F, so there's no problem. I can just find the elastic energy as a function of F, take the derivative with respect to F, and uh, end of the story. However, if I want to find the deflection at a point B, where there's no force here, then I'm stuck. What to do? Well, the easy trick to use here is to assume that there's a fictitious force Q, like Q is a, is a very, very tiny force, uh, epsilon, very fictitious. So it's, it's close to zero. But we just put it in, find the elastic energy with Q involved as if it, it exists, and then after we find we apply Castagliano's uh, uh, theorem, we set Q equals zero. So that's kind of the idea that we will have here. So if we now look at the moment due to the force F, the moment is minus F times X, where X is measured from that end. So this is X in here. Um, so we have the moment and uh, we can introduce the moment uh, to find the deflection at A as du by df and we have the formula now 1 over Ea m dm by df and dm by df is minus x because when we take the derivative of minus fx with respect to f we get minus x so <coughs> we now have to integrate from 0 to L. Since the shaft is stepped and it has two different moments of area, one uh, I1 here and I2 here, then we better uh, do the integration uh, over two intervals. <coughs> and that's what we did here. So we integrate from 0 to L over 2, um, and we have 1 over I1, and this is your M, so this is M here, and this is dM by dF, and then uh, from L over 2 to L, I have 1 over 2I1, because the mo effective moment of area is bigger, and M is minus Fx, and this is dM by dF, is the same and then I do the integrations as you can see then uh, I get uh, the result is composed of two parts one part is FL cubed over 24 I1 and the other part is 7 FL cubed over 48 I1 so the final result is given here uh, which is positive and it is in the direction of the force F now, the biggest uh, $64,000 question is, uh, what do we want to do about this uh, deflection here under uh, the point B? So we're going to assume that there's a Q and uh, infinitesimal force, and then write now the moment uh, in the two sections. In section 1, from A to B here, the moment is minus F times X. In uh, section 2, from B to C, the moment has two parts. One is due to the force F, which is minus Fx, as usual. And the other one is minus Q times X minus L over 2. Because now X has to exceed 
L over 2 for that fictitious force to contribute. So in this case, I, I'm interested in the, the, uh, the deflection under, under point B, so I have to take the derivative with respect to, to Q. That's very important because the derivative is to be taken with respect to the force that causes deflection at that point. So for uh, the first part, which is the first part of the moment distribution from 0 to L over 2, there's no Q, therefore the derivative is 0. And for the second part, having Q, then it gives you minus X minus L over 2 uh, as the uh, derivative. So we are now able to use um, the uh, find the deflection at B. So again, we divide it into two parts, from 0 to L over 2 and from L over 2 to L. And uh, in this part, there is no derivative with respect to Q, so you get 0. In this part, you have the derivative with respect to Q, and then you put it into integral. Then you get the cubic here, square here, and then finally you get the final results 5 or 96 FL cubed over EI1. So compare this to uh, what we have computed before, which is 3 over 16. It means that this deflection is smaller, quite a bit smaller, uh, which is uh, something that we would have expected uh, from uh, just common sense. So that's uh, an example that shows us how to uh, compute the deflection uh, in... Um, beams using Castagliano's uh, theorem and um, simply stated we just have to compute the elastic energy but not evaluate it just write it down as a functional form of the force or the moment or the torque and then we proceed with this take its derivative and integrate it uh, over the length so in the next uh, set uh, in the next lecture, I will uh, give uh, one additional example in which we will look at the deflection in a more complex beam uh, that has a part straight and a, another part uh, that has uh, curvature. Um, with that, I think we will stop.